Hello everybody, another awesome day of work. Heading to my next location, probably about it's 40 minutes from here. Uh, don't worry, I'm not gonna make this video 40 minutes. Um, thank you for tuning in to Cage Competent Fitness. Just wanna give a little um, little awareness. Uh, I have another uh, YouTube channel uh, that I would hope all of you would uh, care to visit. It's uh, called Acclaimed Mentorship. And it's basically on my other uh, business that I'm really focusing on when it comes to uh, promoting and working on everyone's self leadership skills to improving their leadership skills and uh, self-awareness of what's preventing them from reaching uh, the goals that they need to get to so a lot of that a lot of that topic will be in that channel uh, as most of you know, I'm not just a martial artist, but I'm also a district manager and I've been a manager and a leader in uh, various uh, occupations as well as working with the martial arts. So I do have that other side to me aside from the martial arts side. Uh, so feel free to visit it. I'll, I'll put the link at the bottom on acclaimed mentorship. But let's get down to it. So today's video is um, responding to a request uh, to give my opinion on the legendary fighter Sugar Ray Robinson. Now I'm not gonna lie, you know, I was not aware of Sugar Ray Robinson um, <clears throat> before that comment. So thank you for um, thank you for sharing that uh, and allowing me to look through um, this uh, this fighter from before. So. Now, I didn't really memorize all, all of the all of the facts, all of the autobiography or biography of uh, Sugar Ray Robinson. Um, this video is more to focus on his uh, his fighting technique, his fighting style. Uh, you can go on YouTube and find endless documentaries on Sugar Ray Robinson, uh, on his uh, on his upward journey of his life to the downward spiral. And just like any human being, you know, we have our ups and downs. Um, you know, life of a fighter is very hard, especially if your occupation is in the, you know, in the job of hurting and getting hurt. Um, there's usually obvious outcomes for that type of uh, occupation. Respect to them, you know. Um, if you're a UFC fighter, you're an MMA fighter, uh, you're a full contact fighter, boxer, uh, pro wrestler. You know, I mean, you know, we all we all have to um, make a living in the in the areas where we're talented. Now, speaking of that, let's get down to it. Three minutes in. Hopefully, I'm not talking your ear off. But here we go. Um, Sugar Ray Robinson uh, was, in my opinion to everything that I've seen, a natural born fighter. Uh, he states in his documentary that he didn't, doesn't enjoy boxing, he didn't enjoy boxing. Uh, he did it uh, for the occupation of it. Now obviously there's a lot of money in boxing. So if you have a talent, if you're good in that occupation, it only makes sense that you're going to become a boxer. Uh, yeah, of course, being a boxer is very dangerous. I mean, you know, one wrong hit to your to your skull and and you're down for the count, you know. You, you could go from as low as uh, concussions to down to being paralyzed, down to dying. Now, uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, his uh, record was more than 170 wins. Very, very few losses. It was like one or two. Um, a lot of knockouts and one kill. He has one kill under his belt. Not saying that with pride, just saying that with, uh, he does state that it was a regret in his life. It was something he foresaw happening, but, you know, obviously we can't see the future. We might have our premonitions. We might have very calculated outcomes. And he did have a very calculated outcome in that fight. Uh, I forgot the, 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 the name of the fighter, but it was a championship match and yeah, he, one left hook to the head and the, the guy was gone to what, I, to what I hear he died in the ring or in the ambulance I'm not sure but 
Sugar Ray Robinson, um, unfortunately, there wasn't a lot of uh, recorded fights for him, especially during that time because it was between the times of the 1930s. Um, <clears throat> he became a champion at the age of 18 years old. Uh, feel free to uh, fact check me, you know. Again, I'm going based on on the documentaries I saw on Sugar Ray Robinson. Uh, for now, I'll just uh, refer to him as Sugar Ray. Not to be confused with uh, Sugar Ray Leonard or uh, Sugar Ray the alternative singer. <laughs> so, regardless, uh, he, he would get into the ring and the, the, he gets praised for his style of fighting, his agility, the way he dances around his opponent. Um, he's known for also approaching a fight in a psychological level. You know, he will try to psych you out. He will try to throw you off your game. Uh, but to what I've noticed, at least to what I've seen with my own eyes, is that um, you know he wasn't. He didn't have. He didn't have what looked to be a strong defense only because his offense was that good. He would come at you swinging hard, swinging fast. Kind of like think about how a whip hits you. You don't really um, think of blocking a whip. You know, when, you're, when, when a whip is about to strike you, it strikes you with uh, a level of speed and a level of snap that can cut your skin. So his punches, when you would look at them, you would look at it, he's just throwing his arms at his opponent. But if you really look closely, he's whipping his arms, aiming for his opponent's vital parts. He would go for, he would go for the shots to the liver. He would aim for the jaw, the area to rock, rock his opponents. No, he didn't. Even though it looked like he was just throwing wild punches, it, it, he had a high level of timing when it came to striking. All his hits, and I know any, anybody else might be, might be able to um, dispute this, but his hits were precise. Even though they looked like they were all over the place, all those strikes were going to a vital point. He was really looking to dismantle his opponents. Now, I'm not saying that Sugar Ray was a bad guy in the ring. It's just that he knew his job. His job was to destroy his opponent enough so that he gets his paycheck. He knew that this was his job, his occupation, his salary. You know, I mean, um, a side note that he did build uh, various businesses that he hoped to be successful you know and I understand to get out of the world of fighting I mean right now I'm almost uh, 40 years old I'm at 38 knocking at 39 coming up very soon and I know that even though there's like a lot of money let's just say in the UFC and regardless of the level of experience I have you know I, I probably would not make my first choice of occupation right now to uh, start the MMA UFC fighting or K1 kickbox, you know, I probably would you not know, have a family of four kids. I'm not gonna be leaving them behind, you know, but I mean, uh, Sugar Ray, um, you know, he did come, he did get out of boxing and come back into boxing various times. Um, again, with, with a high level of, of his fighting technique, obviously age does catch up to you and that's what happened to him as well. Um, and uh, in, uh, in one of the videos that I have titled uh, Martial Artists Will Hate This Video, um, I talk about how we're not meant to, uh, our bodies are not meant to fight. We're not, we're meant to survive. We're meant to withstand um, some level of damage to our body, but we're not meant to intentionally fight as a sport. So, you know, that being said, uh, you know, a lot of damage, especially to boxers, to anything, anybody in contact sports, you know, there's, they, even even though they win the fights, um, you know, the, the body takes it as a loss, you know, because you got hit as well. I use the analogy that there's a reason why even, even a pro fighter will break their hand when 
in a real street fight. You know, they're punching someone's skull, something that can is almost as hard as iron, and you know, trying to knock somebody out. So, yeah, I mean, it's going back to Sugar Ray Robinson. The the, the guy had impeccable timing. He didn't he didn't waste a hit. Now we're talking about a fighter that back in the in the 1940s, Muhammad Ali um, saw him as an inspiration, learned Sugar Ray's uh, fighting style, and implemented it to his own. And we're talking about Muhammad Ali. Now I think that's a name that's uh, that does go around more popular, only because I've heard Muhammad Ali's name more. Even before I did my my uh, boxing um, training versus uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, as well as Mike Tyson, even uh, even pointed out uh, the greatness of Sugar Ray Robinson's uh, fighting level. So you know he ha- he does get his recognition. He did get the award for um, you know greatest fighter I don't think there'll ever be a fighter like him especially to the to the type of uh, documentaries I've seen on him um, and yeah it is it is unfortunate that we don't see a lot more of his fights because during that time um, you know the the motion picture the the video recording was not as accessible as it is now uh, I think we would have learned a lot by watching uh, his fighting style you know if you want to compare it to a martial art might even compare it to Choi Lee Foot you know with a bit of a wushu speed to it you know it's just a lot of throwing your arms except even though something might look sloppy there's a precise snap at the end and that's why I bring in the whole whip a whip might be coming at you from different angles but the moment it makes that snap it's gonna cause damage so again this is my uh, my opinion, my perspective towards the legendary fighter Sugar Ray Robinson. May he rest in peace. Um, may he be an inspiration to other fighters going through the downward spiral that uh, fighters will tend to go through, that any human being might face as well. Um, you know, lesson to learn in uh, in the world of fighting and in the world of humanity. All right, guys, have a great day.